So welcome back for metallic bonding. Uh, metallic bonding, there are really strong forces of attraction that are responsible for the high melting point of most metals. So metallic bonding works like this. There is a chemical bond that results from the attraction between metal cations and the surrounding sea of electrons. So what happens is, all when the metals all get together, they kind of give up, share, distribute their outer shell of electrons and you end up with the, just this ocean, this sea of electrons that surrounds all of the positively charged metal cations. What this means is those electrons are all free to move around through the different orbital levels of those shared orbitals of that, those metal atoms. Um, there's vacant P and D orbitals in the metal's outer energy levels and they overlap in energy and that allows the outer electrons to move freely, both physically and in energy levels, um, and move freely throughout the metal. This is why metals are so good at conducting electricity. Um, the valence electrons don't belong to any one atom. They're distributed and shared by all of those atoms. So metals uh, tend to pack in uniform hard spheres uh, to best use the available space. It's called closest packing, where each atom has 12 neighbors that it contacts, 12 nearest neighbors. So metal alloys, there's a couple of different kinds. There's a substitutional alloy, where some metal atoms are replaced by others of a similar size. You still get the same kind of bonding, and you still distribute that, so copper and zinc in brass. There's also interstitial alloys, where <clears throat> an atom of another kind fits in between the little spaces between those metal atoms. Um, one of the most common is carbon steel, where the carbon is an interstitial alloy with iron and fits in between those little spaces. So the interstices or holes in the closest packed metal structure are occupied by small atoms. So properties of metal. Uh, metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. This is because of those shared electrons and the flow of electrons actually allow energy or heat to be distributed throughout, but also allow electricity to move and flow freely. They're malleable because of that kind of continuous structure. Um, you can change the shape and they're still shared, and so that makes them very malleable, able to be hammered out into thin sheets, as well as ductile and pulled into wires. Um, and they also have very high tensile strength because of that shared electron. So the bonding properties of metal are actually why they behave the way they are. It's also the reason they're shiny and have luster is because of those overlapping P and D orbitals and those broad range of energies that it can interact with. Um, so as light comes in, it can interact with and reflect most all colors of light and that's why you get that luster from metals. So. We've talked about three types of bonding, ionic bonding, covalent bonding, and metallic bonding. You should write three lists. One, the properties of ionic bonding, the properties of covalent bonding, the properties of metallic bonding. So once you've done that, you should now draw a Venn diagram for those three types of bonding, the ionic, the covalent, and the metallic bonding, um, and what they share in common. I'll give you a free one. In the middle, it should be electrons should be one of the things. All bonding has to do with the behavior of the electrons in those materials.